everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're gonna to be talking about isotope percent abundance and average atomic mass. If you look at these three atoms, they are all hydrogen. However, they're different. In fact, we call them isotopes of one another. I can tell they're hydrogen because they have one proton in the middle and their number of neutrons change. So we don't have any, then we have one, and then we have two. So that's what makes these isotopes of one another. Same number of protons, different number of neutrons, which means that their mass number is changing as well. So we can look at how to write isotope notation. You're gonna start off with their chemical symbol right in the middle, so this is hydrogen. The top number is going to be the mass of that particular isotope because remember, it's the mass that's changing. So we can identify that isotope based off of the mass. So this is hydrogen three. The bottom number is going to be your number of protons or the atomic number and that's found on the periodic table. Now, side note, if you have an isotope, it can also be an ion, okay? And if it is, you're going to find the charge in the upper right hand corner. Let's do an example. Write the isotope notation for lithium six, seven, and eight. Go ahead and pause the video and try out and check your answer, see if you got it right. All right, let's go ahead and look at them. So we're gonna start by writing the Li for lithium. The bottom number is the number of protons or your atomic number, and that is three. Lithium has three protons and it forever will. So three's on the bottom and that's not gonna change. That's gonna stay consistent with every lithium there is, no matter which isotope it is. Now the top number is what's going to change, and that is going to be based off of the mass. Well, it told us the mass right here. This six, seven, and eight is referring to the atomic mass of that particular isotope. So we can go ahead and write the six, the seven, and the eight. Now, how many protons and neutrons does each isotope have? Well, we already said they had three protons. That was easy, but what about neutrons? Neutrons, we end up getting that answer by doing our atomic mass and we subtract that from our atomic number or a number of protons. So if we do six minus three, we get three neutrons for this isotope, seven minus three, four neutrons for this one, and five minus three, five neutrons for this one. And that's what lithium looks like, just in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so have you ever wondered why there's an atomic mass in a decimal form? Because the atomic mass is protons plus neutrons and we can't have part of a proton and we can't have part of a neutron so what in the world is going on right well what's happening is it's the average of all the existing isotopes in our universe but it's not just your normal average where you add them all up and divide by how many you have this is actually based off of their abundance which one is naturally occurring the most out in our universe and which one is the least and in between and and we have to do this in a mathematical version and this is how we do it. There's four steps to calculating the percent abundance of isotopes and it's super easy. Let me help you out. First one, change your percentages into a decimal. And then you're gonna multiply by the mass of the isotope. You do this for each isotope and then add them together and you're done. So it really is that simple. Let's try one. Silicon exists as three different isotopes. They are silicon 28, 29, and 30. Their isotope abundances are 92%, 5%, and 3% respectively. What is the relative atomic mass of silicon? Well, we're gonna go ahead and look at number one. What do we do? We change our percentages to a decimal. We can do that in two ways. You can one, divide by 100, or you can move the decimal places over two to the left. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. So if I move this two to the left, you can see I get 0.92. Two to the left, I get 0 0.05 and then 0 0.03. I'm gonna go ahead and put those numbers here so we can move on to the next step. Now we need to take the mass of each one of these and multiply them together, okay? Now it said these were placed respectively, which means in order. So this 28 would go with the 92, this 29 would go with the five, and this 30 would go with the three. So I'm going to take these numbers and I'm gonna multiply them and once I multiply them, then I'm going to add them all up. That's my last step. So I end up getting, once I put it in my calculator, 28.1 AMU. And remember this AMU is atomic mass unit. So if I look on the periodic table, silicon is 28.0855. Well, that is pretty darn close, right? We're only off a teeny tiny bit. 
And really that just comes down to significant figures. So don't get worried if you're like a 10th or even a hundredth off you guys. That's just based off of what significant figures they use and which ones we use and who's more exact. But realistically, we did it right, okay? So let's go ahead and move on. What is the relative atomic mass of carbon? This is not a word problem anymore. We have it in a table. Same information, do it the same exact way. We're gonna take our percentages and we're gonna move them two decimal places over. So we get 0.9945 and we're gonna change this one too to 0 0.0055. We're gonna multiply these by the masses that they belong with and then add them together. So it ends up looking like this. So we get 12 times the number we just got and then we're gonna use that 14 and we're gonna use our converted number instead of the percent and then add them together last in our calculator and we get 12 AMU, AMU for the mass of carbon. Okay, so last one, gallium has two naturally occurring isotopes, gallium 69 um, at 60.1% abundant and gallium at 71, um, gallium 71 at 39.9% abundant. So we're gonna calculate the average atomic mass of gallium. And yes, gallium is that cool element that does melt in your hand, at, like because the heat of your hand can melt it. Low melting point, pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead and start with changing our percentages into a decimal. So move that over to, and this is what we get, 0 0.601 and 0.399. Then we are going to multiply it by the mass of each isotope. So we're taking our first number and we're gonna multiply that by our mass. And remember the mass is found right here. The second one, we're taking our converted number and we're gonna multiply it by the mass, which is found right here, the 71. In your calculator, multiply first and then add, and you end up getting 69.8 AMU. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you liked it, go ahead and push that button for me. Subscribe to see all my videos that are coming out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everybody.